Another big cliffhanger at the end there. We looked and record ID is zero. So that means it's going to go try and pull record zero. And so something happened. Something's messed up. And this little thing, again, just in terms of little difficult things to, to kind of pick up in the beginning as I was learning this for the first time. Let's say that I did go in in my datingapplication.cshtml. Oh, I keep doing that. Let's close that so I don't try and do that anymore. Let's go on our waitlist.cshtml. And instead of in, uh, route ID being um, ID here, let's say I said ASP route blah, like I mentioned before. Now, when I run this, let's watch what happens to my, um, my route. So when I hover over this button, it doesn't any longer say home slash edit slash one. It is passing in a parameter called blah which is going to be equal to one. Okay. And then let's say that on, on the home controller side, sorry, in the program CS side, I did what I told you and I changed this name to blah. Well, now it's going to be looking for a route named blah. And so when I hover over that button, it will show only the one because that blah, information that blah parameter that's being passed now gets hidden in the the routing and so unlike usually it doesn't matter what you call on the home controller as things are passed into us usually it doesn't matter what name we give it but when we when we are, are doing this with passing information through the route it does matter and so uh, i wanted to make this little point so and again, if I rename here, if I highlight the word, right click, rename, and then I name this blah, then it'll change both places. Now, when I run this route, let's watch this again. So let me put a stop here and run. View the wait list. It's gonna be hidden again, the, the blah part, it'll just have the one in there. Let me go to the three one to make it more obvious. So George Michael Bluth, I'm going to edit. I click on that. And now what comes in? It's a three. Because the name matches the route. So unlike other places when we typically do this, this does not matter. Usually we get just whatever comes in first is the first thing. And then if we have two things, int, yada. So if we're using the route to have information come in, it does matter the name. And we, if we put yada first instead of second, usually that wouldn't <clears throat> that would uh, mess things up because it just takes whatever comes in first to the first thing and whatever comes in second to the second thing. In this case, it's actually matching based on what comes in. All right, so we need to match through that whole chain. So back to the way it was set up initially. If it was called ID here in the route and I wanted to pass it in that way, then in the waitlist.cshtml, I would want to use ASP route ID. And then on the home controller side, I would want to say int ID. And this would need to change to int ID as well. So now if we rerun this, view the waitlist and then edit, then now I should have a three in that ID. And of course, Yada is going to be zero because I forgot I even left that in there because there's nothing being passed in called Yada. And so it's going to default. And so I have my int ID of three that I can now load up a record and I can use that record now to access the record in the database. All right. Again, I think that's probably a good place to stop. Um, but, but just this little idea of routing and how that works. And we can pass in multiple things um, using the URL. We can pass in multiple things with that little question mark at the top. And then the pieces of information that we pass, we can use those to pass through the route itself into a form or you know whatever we're doing we can use the route itself to pass information from that view to this controller so we can do things with it all right more in the next video spencer out